Life was going well, but the wife suddenly filed for divorce with a firm attitude. The third daughters have all rushed back from other places, and even coaxing and persuading is useless. El Yuhuayan was very puzzled, even angry. Listening to my wife flipping through the old accounts, going back and forth is nothing more than the hardships she has endured and the sins she has endured. He raised his voice to shut her up, and the daughters turned to him. Everyone in the family was there, and the ignorant granddaughter listened with wide-eyed eyes. El Yuhuayan's old face became hot, and he waved his hand in anger, Stop shouting. Just leave. The words were spoken, but they tossed and turned at night and couldn't sleep. Are you really going to leave? The daughter coaxed people into the guest room to persuade her, and her voice was intermittent. El Yuhuayan pulled out a bottle of wine. Because of high blood pressure, he hadn't drank it for several years, and he drank half of the bottle in one go. After quitting cigarettes for more than ten years, I suddenly wanted to smoke one. I remembered that there was a yellow crane tower in the cabinet, which was given by my second son-in-law last year. Staggering out, he accidentally stumbled to the threshold and fell heavily to the ground. The first thought before death turned out to be, the last time my wife stumbled on the threshold, did it hurt so much? When he opened his eyes, he found himself standing on the edge of the mountain. The mountain is windy, the jungle is lush, and the sun and moon are not visible in the deep. El Yuhuayan was startled and quickly backed away. Haha, <laughs> Huayan is frightened. Someone laughed heartily and patted him, that's the end of the game, this time I married a daughter-in-law, you have to come here a few times a year, and you will suffer. His dad was smoking a dry tobacco stick, da da da, this boy. El Yuhuay settled down and looked around. Along with him were his brother and his uncle and father, all sweaty, standing in the shade to take a breath, next to a bag of rice and two baskets, stuffed with two chickens and a few bundles of cloth. El Yuhuayan closed his eyes and suddenly understood what time it was. 1980, October 3rd. The 25th day of the 8th lunar month. Good day for his marriage. El Yuhuayan remembered what his eldest grandson had said about rebirth and pinched himself. Hiss, it really hurts. I didn't expect him to experience a new trend. Okay, it's alright if you come back, so you don't have to get a divorce. Divorce. I must leave. I can't live this day anymore. With the words still in his ears, El Yuhuayan's sweat wiping hand stopped in midair. Or, not ending? Anyway, we have to leave in the end but looking at everyone, especially his father. His father had been dead for several years, and before he died, he was too thin to be human. But now he is fine, beaming, saying that his son must drink a few more drinks when he gets married today. El Yuhuayan opened his mouth and sighed inwardly. Forget it, now is not the right time to talk. Pick a place with no one at a later date, and talk to his dad about it. After taking a breath, while it was still early in the sky, everyone lifted up their things and continued to walk down. At the door of Shen's house, El Yuhuayan almost passed by. He had already forgotten the old wooden house of the Shen family. It fell down a few years after they got married, and the whole family moved to the foot of the mountain to build a bungalow. Seeing his father-in-law greet him cheerfully, El Yuhuayan felt a little uncomfortable. Because it was only a few years after the marriage, my father-in-law didn't give a good face, and he didn't look satisfied anywhere. He couldn't help but wonder, why, right now, a good person suddenly changed his face? Before he could think about it, a group of people crowded him in. The liveliness is lively, but it is too poor, and he can't even get into the blackened house. Enduring the discomfort, he was pushed into the room on the left. Just looking up, El Yuhuayan was stunned. Everything around him faded like a tide, only that bright color lit up the whole room. It was the sinuous blush at the corner of the bride's eyebrows. With her long hair tucked behind her head, she was wearing a bright red dress and sat shyly on the edge of the bed with her face down. He kept twisting his fingers around the corner of his clothes. Hearing the movement, 
he couldn't help but secretly raised his eyes to look at him. Her face was pink, her eyes were bright, and her slightly pursed lips looked like peach blossoms that bloomed in early March. Is this Shen Ruyun? El Yu Huayan couldn't believe it. He recalled carefully, when she was young, Shen Ruyun always seemed to have messy hair, wearing a tattered padded jacket, sitting on the threshold with a haggard face on her arms, and she was dead. But the bride at the moment, delicate and pretty, is just young. He was stunned. If he hadn't vaguely seen his wife's shadow, he would have suspected that this was a different person. Everyone burst into laughter, you pushed me and shoved El Yu Huayan straight. Shen Ruyun blushed and lowered her head, and refused to lift it up again. El Yu Huayan returned to his senses and looked away, and his expression naturally cooperated to invite everyone out to meet relatives. The chickens and rice they brought were left behind, and a few cloth mothers were stuffed into Shen Ruyun's baggage. They were all poor and had no dowry. The two pieces of cloth they brought back could be considered a press box. My mother-in-law didn't know how to hide it, but El Yu Huayan saw it and didn't say anything, but his father's expression changed. While going to the toilet, El Yu Huayan looked for his father, Dad, anyway, you have an idea in your heart. I mean, this marriage, why don't you just end it? What nonsense are you talking about? His father's eyes widened, and he was so angry, no? Your mother has already said that if you don't succeed this time, you will have to be a bachelor, and you don't even think about how old you are. If you can't eat here, can you get this little girl back to be your wife? You are beautiful. What? El Yuhuayan's eyes widened as well, and suddenly he remembered what he said most often. If I hadn't married you, you would have starved to death. I could have married someone with money and land but I ended up marrying you. He suddenly remembered that his family had a large population and didn't have much money. He got married early in the country, and he was only in his teens when someone talked about matchmaking. When they heard about his brothers, they didn't talk about it at all. It took a few years before someone introduced him. Shen family. The two families are far apart. If it wasn't for the Shen family being too poor, he wouldn't have been able to marry Shen Ruyun, and it was because he couldn't hang on his face, so he pretended to be typing to block other people's mouths. How did he say it, he himself forgot. He went out in a trance, and was enthusiastically stuffed a piece of cake, let's eat, we'll have to leave later. A door is placed on the table to make some tea, and there is a cake next to it, one person eats one, drinks a cup of tea, even if it is breakfast. The guarantor was talking to make things happen, and the brother-in-law went out with Shen Ruyun on his back. They have to leave quickly, Yu Yu reading www.yuyuganchu.com climbed over two mountains and returned to Luya village. El Yu Huayan was pondering, is this really his wife? Is he really going to marry her again? What if she clamored for a divorce after decades? When he started climbing the mountain, he had no time to think about it. Afterwards, life was good, and he used to go in and out by car, but he didn't even walk much. He had been comfortable for so many years, and suddenly he was in a panic when he suddenly climbed a mountain. The burden is not heavy, but it must not be carried by Shen Ruyun, it can only be carried by him. After finally climbing over a mountain, I didn't have time to catch my breath, and then I had to climb a second higher mountain. When he was standing halfway up the mountain to rest his breath, to be honest, his legs felt weak. Huayan, what's the matter with you, haha, <laughs> do you want my brother to carry you away? A slap slapped him on the back, almost slapping El Yu Huayan to the ground. This is really his good brother, El Yu Huayan slapped it back, fuck you. Shen Ruyun, who was following behind him, trembled for a while. He subconsciously retracted his hand, and his voice softened, cough, hurry up and crawl. Yo-Yo, the new official is in a hurry, he's all set to leave, hurry back to his bridal chamber in the village. A group of people laughed, Shen Ruyun covered her face and hid behind him. El Yu Huayan had never seen anything before, 
so he bumped into it with an elbow, you kid, next time you get married, I won't bother you. Oh, I'm so scared. Laughing and making noise, climbing the mountain doesn't seem to be so tiring anymore. When I arrived at Luya village, I could see the old house crowded with people from a distance, very lively. But. Lu Hawaii lives in peace. He doesn't live here. Isn't his house at the entrance of the village? Looking up, his three-story building is still overgrown with weeds and is a wasteland. My heart suddenly became half cold. When it came to the new house, Lu Hawaiian's face turned black. The four bedrooms in the house are all enough, and he has always lived in the side bedroom, so how could he be arranged in this side room? Did he remember it wrong? What's the matter? His father glanced at him and coughed, your mother said you should live first and move back to that house after a while. Lu Hawaiian thought for a while, it seemed that when Shen Ruyun was pregnant with the child, they would live in that room because the partial room was leaking. But he was still reluctant. He wanted to change to a different house. He didn't want to live in this old house, not to mention the side house that was used to raise pigs, and it smelled bad. Shen Ruyun didn't know anything, so she happily sat in, her little face couldn't help but smile. Silly. Having not returned to the old house for too long, Lu Huayan felt inconvenience everywhere. The mother-in-law didn't know where to go. The main room was clean and there was nothing. The mother-in-law and the others didn't know where to sit. A group of people crowded in the corner, holding their teacups in a daze. Lu Hawaiian panicked when he saw their nervousness. They were fine with everything, but they were too honest. He grabbed his little brother who was jumping around and shouted, Where's the chair? The younger brother was startled, and when he looked back to see him, he grinned, Mom moved her house and said that there are too many people and chairs blocking the way. Go, move here. Lu Hawaii settled for a while, then caught him again, Forget it, I'll go with you. The door was closed tightly, but when she pushed the door and went in, Zhao Suolin, who could not be found anywhere, was lying on the bed, her face pale and her breath sullen. Mom, what's the matter with you? Lu Hawaiian was a filial man, and was startled when he saw it. Zhao Suolin closed her eyes, groaned, had a headache, was uncomfortable, and was about to die. Go, call. Lu Hawaiian subconsciously wanted to call the doctor over, but he couldn't remember the name of the doctor at this moment, forget it, just go to the hospital and call dad over. Don't go to the hospital. Zhao Suolin sat up with her eyes wide open, and she turned back when she saw his shocked face, I'll just lie down, it doesn't cost me the money. Lu Hawaiian looked at her for a few seconds, and suddenly remembered what Shen Ruyun said later. Your mother pretended. She likes to pretend. She's in good health, and she's already in her 80s and still jumping around, so you believe her nonsense. Yes. When he died, his mother didn't die. He was in good health and could eat two bowls of rice at a time. Are you really pretending? There was a lot of noise outside, Lu Hawaiian remembered the group of people who were still standing stupidly, decided to talk about it later picked up a few chairs and walked out. His brother also picked up a chair, but his mother sat up again, where are you going? What are you doing? Standing at the door, Lu Hawaiian finally understood. His mother put something on her face, and her chin rubbed against the quilt, so that a large piece of white was left on the quilt. When she sat up, the powder puff rustled down. For a while, he couldn't tell what he was feeling. He didn't say anything, just dragged his chair and left. The mother-in-law and the others finally had a place to sit, holding tea in their hands and looking cramped. Lu Hawaiian folded his body and dragged a stool, scooped up a pot of fried peanuts and came over, Mom and Dad, eat first, I'll go out and have a look after dinner. Hey, it's fine. My mother-in-law cheered happily. After catching his dad in the kitchen, Lu Hawaiian ignored his doubts and pushed him to the main room, my dad just went to make tea, come over to chat with you. Hey, it's fine. The old man also smiled. 
Seeing his father accompany the guests, the uncles also had a reason to join, eating peanuts and drinking tea, the main room was very lively for a while. Lunch is a full meal, but there are really few dishes. There were only three tables set up, and El Yuhuayan couldn't help but think about his little granddaughter. Full Moon Wine has set up thirty tables. The food wasn't that good, so El Yuhuayan took a few bites and started toasting. Shen Ruyun also came out and followed him to toast. When he walked to his father's side, his father grabbed him and said, Tell your daughter-in-law to call your mother out. You still have to drink a glass of wine. I'm not free. El Yuhuayan smiled, Dad, go ahead, I'm toasting. When Zhao Suolin came out, it happened that the couple were respecting their mother-in-law. This time, I don't have so much attention to it. Toast a glass of wine and change your mouth, even if you are married. They even got their marriage licenses several years later, because they are not old enough now. Thinking of this, El Yuhuayan suddenly froze. Shen Ruyun, she is now, only 18 years old, right? Looking at her pretty face, El Yuhuayan despised himself deeply. But after thinking about it, you seem to be only 19? Okay. It's all old cows nibbling on the tender grass, let's not talk about anyone else. Remembering that he was still a tender grass, he couldn't help but bring a smile on his face. Turning his face, he saw his mother sitting on the table with a drooping face. The powder on the face was washed off, but the nose is not the nose, and the eyes are not the eyes. So El Yuhuayan knew that she was going to make trouble again. Every time she looks like this, she just wants to make trouble. El Yuhuayan simply turned the glass around and faced his dad, Dad, Mom, toast you. Before his mother could speak, his father had already drank a little too much, and nodded cheerfully, Hey, hey, all right, drink, drink. Before the mother could react, the toast was finished. Taking Shen Ruyun to the seat, El Yuhuayan filled her with a bowl of rice, hurry up and eat. Looking at the white rice in the bowl, Shen Ruyun was restless. The Shen family is so poor, it is rare to eat a meal, most of which are cornmeal and sweet potatoes. Only those who celebrate the new year can add some rice. Shen Ruyun didn't dare to look up, she tugged at the corner of El Yuhuayan's clothes, will it be too much? Many? El Yuhuayan glanced at her in surprise, how much? Didn't she have to eat two or three bowls every meal, saying that she was always not full before? Not much. He glanced at her slender wrist and gave her a piece of meat, eat it, if it's not enough, add more. This is really open to eating. Looking at her bulging cheeks, El Yuhuayan muttered in his heart, let's eat, let's eat, don't talk about not giving you enough food in the future. Yu Yu reading www.yuyuganshu.com After the villagers finished eating, they each went back with their bowls, tables, and chairs. There are very few tables, chairs, tableware, and chopsticks to prepare wine at this time. Everyone borrows them and takes them back when they finish eating. Shen Ruyun sat back in the room again, with her mother-in-law and her sister-in-law talking to her inside. She sent some fried peanuts over. When El Yuhuayan came out, she heard that her mother-in-law said that Shen Ruyun's marriage was a blessing. Enjoy? Why do you feel guilty? El Yuhuayan sneered inwardly. The young daughter-in-law, who is white and tender, will become a yellow-faced woman in less than two years. Thinking of Shen Ruyun's face, he really didn't understand. Obviously, the Shen family is even poorer. So how could she toss herself into the ghostly appearance she later did in his family? I don't remember most of what happened back then, but I can take a good look at it now, so as to save her from going through the old accounts in the future, he has forgotten everything, and there is no room to pay back. The family is small, but luckily there are many brothers and sisters, so there are still many beds. The mother-in-law and the whole family squeezed together and barely made it for one night, so there was no need to borrow it from someone else's house. Rice is also leftovers, no one said anything bad. El Yuhuayan was actually quite worried, and looked at his father-in-law from time to time. 
Strangely, the old man never complained from the beginning to the end, instead he always praised him for being sensible and promising. It doesn't seem that he was bored with him because the food was not good. After going to the relative's house to deliver things, El Yuhuayan returned to the room under the teasing eyes of everyone. He didn't react until he was in the room. By the way, they are newly married and will definitely live together. But El Yuhuayan looked at Shen Ruyun's face and knew that this was his wife, but he really couldn't do it. This is too small. After hesitating for a while, El Yuhuayan decided to take a bath, did you take a bath? Washed. Shen Ruyun's face flushed and she shrank at the foot of the bed in shame. El Yuhuayan turned his face away pretending to be calm, took his clothes and said in a low voice, You, you are too young now, I don't care, hurry up and sleep. Well, we will talk about it later. Without waiting for Shen Ruyun's reaction, he opened the door and went out. When he came back, Shen Ruyun was already asleep. El Yuhuayan breathed a sigh of relief, lifted the quilt, and lay down far away from her. The next morning, his mother was sweeping the floor with a broom, sweeping and flushing, shouting that the floor was dirty. El Yuhuayan got up and went out, took the broom from her hand, OK, Mom, I'll just sweep it. Where's your daughter-in-law? Zhao Suolin widened her eyes and said angrily, It's so late. It's only five o'clock. El Yuhuayan pushed her directly to the kitchen and yawned, I'm hungry, Mom. Hurry up and cook. Dad will get up later. After sweeping the floor, everyone got up. Because everyone was there, Zhao Suolin didn't say anything. After all, after breakfast, my father-in-law and the others are going back. While drinking tea, El Yuhuayan remembered that they should give someone something to bring back. But the mother was still sulking. She was cleaning the pot, the dishes, and the stove but she didn't move anyway. He didn't try to coax her either. He had been lied to all his life by her, and he felt ashamed when he thought about coaxing her even when he was old. At that time, Shen Ruyun must have looked at him like a joke, right? Look at him like a fool, circling around his mother. El Yuhuayan went straight to the house, took a cloth bag to put some peanuts in, and got some rice and salted fish. El Yubeokuo just came in and was startled when he saw him, what are you doing? Mom doesn't have time to do this, so I can only pretend that I can't. Oh. El Yubeokuo came in to get shredded tobacco. Seeing that his salted fish couldn't be stuffed in, he simply opened the drawer and gave him a bag of sugar, take a bag of sugar, your uncle gave it. El Yuhuayan snorted and stuffed it in too. The mother-in-law and the others refused as usual, and El Yuhuayan simply put it into their arms, must have it. Lest your daughter turn over the old accounts after thirty years, say that she has not given anything, and send them back like beggars. In the end, his father smoked a cigarette stick and persuaded him with a smile, and then my husband accepted it. Shen Ruyun followed them to the foot of the mountain, but she couldn't send them any more, so she followed them back. Her eyes were red, and El Yuhuayan looked at her and felt very pitiful, and sighed, It's okay, I don't have to go back the day after tomorrow, so I can see you again. Shen Ruyun glanced at him shyly, then nodded obediently, Hmm. After El Yuhuayan finished speaking, her legs felt sore. Yes, you have to go back, you have to climb the mountain again. But it's okay, at least you can rest for a few days. In the end, when he got home and looked at his mother's black face, he knew it was not over. Zhao Suolin drooped her face, sat at the door and pointed at Zhang Shan, Ruyun, the ground is not clean, you will clean it later, I just saw your house, if it is dirty, use a rag to wipe it, and the kitchen. Pot. El Yuhuayan looked at her mouth that kept going, and suddenly doubted her ears. He tried to recall. When he got married, did this thing happen? Oh, he was drunk at the time. He woke up the next day and hurriedly sent his father-in-law's family back to sleep. He slept directly until it was dark. When Shen Ruyun came to call him, she also said that she was very tired after a busy day. 
that is to say, these things happened? Seeing that Shen Ruyun had tears in her eyes, she took the broom and started to sweep the floor hard. His mother was still calling to remove the sheets for her to wash, and El Yu Huayan suddenly turned off the fire. He clearly saw the days she lived, but he never took it to heart. The eldest daughter is right, she should have left. I only scanned it in the morning, so I don't need to do it. El Yu Huayan walked over with a calm expression, took the broom, and raised his chin, the clothes I wore yesterday were washed and dried and put under the eaves. You can take them out for me to dry. Shen Ruyun held her hands stiffly, not daring to move. I have to sweep. His mother jumped up, slapped her thighs and scolded, I just got married and then I forgot my mother, oh my, my head hurts. The younger brothers and sisters who will help her scold in the future are still young, so they don't dare to make a sound, they hide behind the door and look at them timidly. Mom. El Yuhuayan looked up at her, seriously trying to distinguish her from the loving look in her memory, I just got married yesterday, you are making such a fuss today, do you want people to know that marrying me will not end well? What the are you doing? Zhao Suolin became anxious when she heard this. Last night, El Yu Baokuo said that he wanted to break off the marriage on the spot, and she panicked when she thought of it, women have to do things to get them back, so why not let her be the eldest lady? El Yu Huayan looked at Shen Ruyun's blushing face, and pushed her into the room, go, bring my clothes back to dry. Then he threw the broom to his younger brother and pushed his mother through the door, Mom, come in and talk. Now Zhao Suolin, most of the tricks he has seen, and his acting skills are not as superb. After watching more, it's actually like that. El Yu Huayan didn't answer, just watched her act, and in the end, she suddenly said that if she couldn't do it, she left and married another one, making Zhao Suolin silent for a long time. Then what? Zhao Suolin hesitated for a while, then said awkwardly, this Shen Ruyun is okay, at least it's cheap, don't bother, there's no money at home to get you another wife. What's more, it's so cheap. After hearing this, El Yu Huayan was silent for a while, and finally sighed, you know this marriage is not easy, so don't bother. Glancing at him, Zhao Suolin couldn't help it, I'm not trying to pinch it, or I'll have to climb on my head. If you don't want to, forget it. El Yu Huayan was stunned for a while, then suddenly laughed. Yes, at this time, he was still young, and he didn't have so many excuses. What she said was for his own good, was to teach Shen Ruyun how to be a good wife and how to take good care of him. In fact, after all, it was for her own sake. When she went out, Shen Ruyun was drying her clothes. There are only two clothes in total, no matter how much she dawdled, she couldn't make flowers. El Yu Huayan looked amused, and called her over, come in. She followed up with some unease, and Shen Ruyun tentatively said, Mom, what did she say? Thinking of the work I said, if I really had to do it, I'm afraid I wouldn't even have time to catch my breath after a whole day. She was teasing you just now, why would you do that when you got married? El Yu Huayan smiled and said comfortingly, just clean up our house when you have time. There's nothing else to do when it's winter. Subconsciously, he didn't want to make things too explicit. It's best if she's going to take it as soon as she sees it. Shen Ruyun doesn't know anything, and the world is at peace. Shen Ruyun breathed a sigh of relief, and a smile appeared on her face, okay. She laughed dazzlingly, and El Yu Huayan looked at it for two seconds and then naturally looked away. You pack up, I'll go out. He went to the wasteland. Squatting on the field stem, he thought for a long time. He couldn't stay in the village for long, he had to go out to make money. Once the grand system of history is opened, every page is brand new. The reform and opening up is imminent, and he has to get on this train. After thinking about it clearly, El Yu Huayan stood up, patted the ashes on his body, and went to the village party secretary. First of all, he has to deal with the work points. The village party secretary was his father's friend. Hearing his intention, 
he couldn't help but be a little surprised, you want to pay for your work points? Yes, Uncle Joe. At this time, the work points are not as closely watched as before, and there is no need to work every day. As long as the monthly work points reach the number of points, they will turn a blind eye. This, Hwayan. Josisha frowned, holding the enamel cup and pondering, this is not about money. Does your father agree to this? Lu Hwayan shook his head and smiled bitterly, I haven't told him yet. He also knew that his father would not agree. Look at your child. Josisha stretched his brows and patted his shoulder with a smile, you still have to discuss this kind of important matter with your dad. As long as your dad agrees, it's not a problem for me. Originally it was just a word. Everyone in the village is poor, and the work on the team is not tiring. If you can earn an extra penny, many people are rushing to do it. With this accurate statement, Lu Hawaiian got up satisfied and said goodbye. When it was time for dinner in the evening, Lu Hawaiian calmly dropped a bomb, Mom, I found Uncle Joe today, and I won't get work points in the future. No need for work points? The family's eyes lit up. The most excited is none other than his brother Lu Ding Yuan. He raised his head and stared at Lu Hawaiian. He didn't even bother to eat, really? I don't need to pick up cow dung in the future. Lu Baokuo's face sank, and he shouted, What's the matter with you, eat your meal. What do you scold him for, how old is he? Zhao Suolin felt distressed for protecting the cub. Seeing her like this, Lu Baokuo turned to look at Lu Huayan, What did you say? I happened to be passing by today and heard Uncle Joe talking about something. Lu Huayan looked relaxed and slowly picked up the sweet potatoes. When the people leave, I will find Uncle Joe. He saw that I heard it, so he didn't hide it from me, saying there's new news up there. Joe Zishu is known for his reputation. After all, he can write and calculate and everyone is basically convinced by what he says. On the way back, Lu Hawaiian figured it out, and said directly, his parents would definitely not agree, but anyway, they were in awe of Joe's issue, and they wouldn't confront him, so why didn't he pull the banner as a tiger's skin? Not only will the labor union disappear, but the brigade will also be disbanded. Lu Hawaiian finished in a few words and made a conclusion, Uncle Joe said that there are many opportunities outside, so he found a relationship and asked someone to take his nephew out. He went up to ask for a coincidence, and he promised to take me with him. Carry him? Lu Baokuo pondered, not even bothering to eat, his nephew is the one who has finished elementary school. For a while, he couldn't remember that person's name. Hey, yes, it's just him. Lu Hawaiian remembered clearly, Bibe Jingjing, the one you call him a college student. This title is purely for everyone to play with him. After shouting for a long time, I don't even remember his real name. Lu Baokuo couldn't help laughing when he heard it, and glared at him, it's a mixed name, but I don't want to tell anyone. I know. Lu Hawaiian sighed. Speaking of Uncle Joe's nephew, he is really a nerd. I can only read, and my head is rusty. I went out this year, saying that I was going to school, but I was deceived on the way, and there was no news. It has been decades since he was born, no one was seen in life, and no corpse was seen in death. Poor Uncle Joe has no children. He is just such a nephew. He is remorseful and painful, and he sighs when he meets everyone. He is particularly impressed. That's okay. Lu Baokuo didn't finish speaking, Zhao Suolin coughed heavily. What's wrong? Lu Hawaiian put down his rice bowl subconsciously and turned his head to bring water. The moment he got up, he saw his mother's face was pale, staring at his father. This is... Before he could react, Lu Baokuo sighed, Hawaiian, it stands to reason that you are young, you should go out and break in, we shouldn't stop you but you can see that there are old people in our family. There are small ones, and you are the boss. Lu Hawaiian had thought about it for a long time, and now said neatly, I have made money, 
and then I will also pay your work points together, it will be easier. Their family was really poor. They lived all day, and their meal was full of sweet potatoes, not the soft and glutinous ones at the back. He really couldn't stand it. I thought it was almost certain, but the mother yelled sharply, No way. Why? L. U. Hawaiian looked at her puzzled, Very strange, didn't you always want me to make money? I have been talking about it all my life, saying that he is useless, and complaining that he can't make money. I didn't. Zhao Suolin blushed with anger, struggled for a while, then gritted her teeth and said, You can't go out anyway. I didn't even eat, I got up and left. This anger is really inexplicable. L. Yu Hawaiian was confused and turned to look at his father, Dad, what's wrong with Mom? Fine. L. Yu Baokuo couldn't eat any more, so he put down the bowl and picked up the shredded tobacco, this thing. If you want to make money, follow me to learn how to live. In the past, L. Yu Hawaiian always pestered him to learn, but he never taught. Hey! L. Yu Hawaiian smiled, just as he was about to say that he would meet early, he suddenly stopped. Yes, he really hasn't studied at the moment. When he started school, it was because he had nothing when the family was separated, and he had no money to give birth to a child, so his father promised to teach him this work, cutting bamboo to make baskets, and earning some money to make ends meet. Why is this so early? He couldn't say what he had already done, so he simply refused, no need, this can make some money. This time is a rare opportunity. I happen to have acquaintances here, so you don't have to worry about me. Who cares about you? Zhao Suolin rushed in from behind the door, pointed at his nose and scolded, I think you are married, so your wings are hard. She turned pale with anger, pointed at Shen Ruyun and shouted, It's you, the mortal star. Unfortunate. If you marry you, there will be no good thing. It's all you who pushed him to do it. This really doesn't make sense. Shen Ruyun was angry and aggrieved, her eyes were red, but she straightened her back, gritted her teeth and refused to admit defeat. Her lips trembled slightly, and her voice was thin and soft, but she was very firm, I don't. It's none of her business. L. U. Hawaiian frowned and looked puzzled, Mom, I'm willing to go out to make money and make progress. Isn't that a good thing? Yes, it's a good thing. L. U. Baokuo interrupted Zhao Suolin, stared at her, and looked at L. U. Hawaiian with a smile, Mom, she just can't bear you, you know, she has always valued you, this is distressing. He knocked on the cigarette stick on the edge of the table and narrowed his eyes, it's not a trivial matter to travel far, the toll is a threshold, and it's not that dad doesn't help you, it's really just after the marriage for you, and you can't afford it, you too you can't let people pay, can you? After all, they were husband and wife, Zhao Suolin instantly understood what he meant, I tell you, you want to pay for your work points, yes, but I won't pay a penny. L. Yu Huayan was stunned. Seeing that he was being frightened, Zhao Suolin raised her chin proudly, and your wife has to go to work. If you don't go to work, there is no way to eat. Let Shen Ruyun go to work? L. Yu Huayan frowned. She is so big. You just don't care about anything, you just think about it. Zhao Suolin continued to talk, and the more she talked, the more vigorous she became, oh. You thought you would go out as soon as you touch your lips? Do you need a set of clothes? Do you need shoes? Food? Do you have to bring everything you drink? Don't tell me you buy it outside, the supply and marketing agency only collects tickets, what do you have? When they were speechless, she finally felt at ease, and gave him a side glance, go out, you will open your mouth, you go, you go, do you have money? Do you have a ticket, where do you go without money, you don't have any money for the ticket, do you? L. U. Hawaiian has already sorted out his family, Yu Yu reading www.yuyuganchu. Com has been working with his dad in the past few years, starting with chopping bamboo and other things, making ten baskets and his dad gave him a dime, 
minus what he usually spends, and now he has just saved a dollar and thirty cents. A dollar and thirty cents would not be enough to buy two lollipops in the future, but now it is a big deal. Lu Hawaiian didn't answer back, just smiled, I'll save some money and go. Hey, hurry up, don't say I'm preventing you from getting rich. The yin and yang are strange. Lu Hawaiian was speechless, too lazy to make a fuss, and glanced at Shen Ruyun, come over and collect my clothes after eating. Shen Ruyun, as if she was about to be forgiven, quickly put down the bowl and got up. She went out to collect clothes, and she was as honest as a little fool. No need to take it. Lu Hawaiian pointed to the eaves, all mine are on here, it's my dad's. Ah. Shen Ruyun quickly withdrew her hand and followed him into the room. After closing the door, Shen Ruyun hesitated. Lu Hawaiian wanted to laugh and sighed, just say what you want, I don't eat people. Ah, uh, no. Shen Ruyun glanced at him carefully and hesitated, where are you going? Go to the county. Lu Hawaiian had already figured it out, but he didn't know what to do now. The city is too far away and the new year will be over in a few months. If you don't run far, go to the county to make some money first, and let's talk about this year. What's wrong? Shen Ruyun thought for a while, then lowered her head and smiled, No, you're right, it's a good thing to be motivated. After getting an accurate answer from the family, Lu Huayan went to find Secretary Zhou the next day. What? Zhou Zisha couldn't even react, you said. Your parents agreed to work points and let you go out to make money. This is impossible. Yes. Lu Hawaiian poured him a cup of tea and chatted with him, it just so happens that my brother is getting older, so it will cost me a lot of money to marry a daughter-in-law. He will get married in a few years and he doesn't know what to do, so we also want to save more money as soon as possible. As soon as he mentioned this, Joe Zishu understood. As for the marriage of these young men in the village, party secretary Joe has always been supportive, and he was afraid that they would be singles. He took a sip of tea and said in agreement, Hey, yes, or you are sensible. Look at the incompetent in my family, who knows how to read and study all day long. At the beginning of these words, Lu Huayan knew who he was talking about. College students. When someone gave him a pillow when he was really dozing off, Lu Hawaiian immediately followed up, reading is good. His eyes showed envy, and his face was full of admiration, unlike me, I don't know a few big characters. Now that the country is developing rapidly, reading can only make a difference. It's the backbone of the country. Joe Zisha was amused by him, so he slapped his thigh, what beam, do you want to build a house? That's a beam. Hey, yes. Lu Hawaiian also laughed, so, if you don't read books, you will make a joke. After a lot of praise, Joe Zishu loved listening to these words. He was coaxed into a smile, and insisted on keeping him for lunch. He didn't drink much, and he was playing loose wine again these days. After a few glasses, he vaguely agreed to let someone take Lu Hawaiian with him. With his permission, Lu Hawaiian returned with satisfaction. Shen Ruyun carried a small stool, sat in front of the door, rolled up her sleeves and rubbed her clothes hard. Where did this come from? This year's wine is rare, Lu Huayan didn't drink much, but he was still a little dizzy when he was drinking. He tried his best to keep his body steady and walked over, frowning, What are you washing, why are there so many clothes? The clothes are colorful. Didn't she wash all the clothes she brought with her? Shen Ruyun lowered her head stiffly and scrubbed hard, this, this is from my mother. The bubbles are all soaked, and it won't work if you don't wash it. Lu Hawaiian sighed and tugged at the collar a little irritably. This dress is very rough and uncomfortable. He glanced at it, didn't look carefully, and shook his head, don't wash it for a long time, you can rub it casually. So many of you are so slow and meticulous that when you can get it done, just fool it twice. After speaking, he narrowed his eyes and said with a smile, Don't you usually deal with my mother the most? 
Why would this be, stupid? He staggered back, lay down, and fell asleep. When I woke up, it was time for dinner. In the end, when she sat down at the table, Shen Ruyun didn't come. This would wake up, and L. Yu Huayan sensed something was wrong. Do the laundry? What are you looking at? Zhao Suolin put the bowl in front of him, go for the rice. All of them are ancestors. If they don't do anything every day, they go out to the wild. L. Yu Huayan filled them with food and walked out in no hurry. Where are you going? Zhao Suolin squinted at him and shouted, sit down and eat. Shen Ruyun didn't come. L. Yu Huayan went out without turning his head. Sure enough, Shen Ruyun was still rubbing her clothes there. The sun is about to set, and the floor is already full of clothes, all under the eaves. There was still a pile in her basin. Why is she washing more and more? L. Yu Huayan walked over and looked at the black water in the basin, is this clothes given to you by your mother? Shen Ruyun didn't speak, she lowered her head and rubbed slowly. Get up, let's eat. After walking two steps, L. Yu Huayan didn't hear any movement. When she looked back, she didn't move at all. The sunset struggled with the last remaining strength to give her a touch of warmth, and the faint golden light outlined her thin outline. She hunched her back, a small mass. L. Yu Huayan sighed, walked over and squatted down, I drank too much in the afternoon, I didn't have time to tell you, didn't I let you deal with it casually? Look at it. He pulled her aside, picked up some clothes by himself, and wringed them out. No matter whether he is dirty or not, he hangs it directly on the bamboo pole. In a few minutes, nothing was left in the basin. Shen Ruyun's eyes widened, tears still hanging on her face, she wanted to laugh a little, you. Hey. L. Yu Huayan emptied the water and put the basin aside, take a day off tomorrow, take you back the day after tomorrow, stop crying, wipe it up and let's go in for dinner. After hesitating for a few seconds, Shen Ruyun glanced at the room, Mom, will be angry. She'll be angry after you wash it. L. Yu Huayan waved his hand and gave her a hug, don't worry, you can eat as soon as you go in, don't say anything, leave it to me, eh. Is this okay? Seeing them come in together, Zhao Suolin rolled her eyes. L. Yu Huayan didn't look at her and handed it to Shen Ruyun after finishing the meal. The moment Shen Ruyun took it, he glanced at the soaked white hand and sighed in his heart. Yes. This is not the Shen Ruyun who dared to lose her temper at his mother and said that she would not serve if she didn't serve her. Ten years later, a daughter-in-law has been able to become a mother-in-law. If she really wants to be like before, she still has to endure. Take her out next year and avoid these things. The meal was extremely dull, Shen Ruyun was the first to finish it, and L. Yu Huayan went straight to add another bowl of rice. I. L. Yu Huayan looked calm, you've been tired all afternoon, eat. Really hungry, Shen Ruyun hesitated for a few seconds before taking the bowl to eat. Zhao Suolin snorted heavily, put down the bowl and got up. Shen Ruyun's heart jumped with fright, and she subconsciously glanced at L. Yu Huayan. It's okay, she eats fast, you eat yours. Early the next morning, he took her out the door and went to town to ask for the fare. When Zhao Suolin got up, there was no one at home, and she was so angry that she scolded her mother. Because she was holding her breath, when she returned to the door, she fell ill again. His father wasn't here, his mother couldn't get up from the bed. L. Yu Huian took a look and confirmed that she was pretending. Yu Yu read www.yuyuganshu. Kam didn't mention anything else, just said they left. The bed was silent. After climbing a mountain, Shen Ruyun vaguely felt that something was wrong. They are empty-handed. She tried to recall that the last time her cousin came back, she seemed to be carrying a bag of rice. L. Yu Huayan didn't notice her thoughts, she was so tired that she gasped, when we get to the street, we'll take a rest and then climb that mountain again. Said to be a street, but it is actually a muddy road, with two shops scattered here and there. Okay. 
Shen Ruyun grabbed the corner of her clothes, thinking in her heart. It really doesn't work. On the street, before she could speak, L. Yu Huayan turned a corner and entered the grain and oil store. Hey! L. Yu Huayan thought about it before going out. She bought things quickly and left. When she came out, Shen Ruyun didn't come back to her senses. When she was halfway up the mountain to rest, she asked, You, have you thought about it long ago? Hey! L. Yu Huayan turned to look at her, and quickly understood, What did you say? Shen Ruyun hummed, I thought. Why do you come to the door without taking it? L. Yu Huayan smiled, shook his head and sighed, I dare not. After all, she held a grudge. Thinking of the things she was talking about, and then looking at the silly little girl in front of him, when the mountain wind blew, he suddenly lost the dryness he used to be. I didn't think before that, after getting along these few days, she really suffered enough when she was young. This is still what he greeted. At that time, he was young, his mind was full of play, and his temperament was uncertain. She must have suffered more than now. Thinking of this, L. Yu Huayan touched her head, and her voice softened, Don't worry, I'll let you live a good life. Until she got home, Shen Ruyun didn't come back to her senses. The two of them were warmly welcomed. Neighbors and relatives heard that his hairy-footed son-in-law was here, and they all came over to watch the excitement. I thought that Shen Ruyun's family, who was married only because it was cheap, must also be poor, but I didn't expect to bring rice and buy salt. On this mountain, their food is actually pretty good. If they are really hungry, they dare to go hunting for game for two days, but salt is really rare. Someone took a sour look, and turned away without drinking any tea. Shen Ruyun followed to the kitchen to cook, and her uncle next door invited L. Yu Huayan over for tea. In order to express his respect for L. Yu Huayan, he also brought out the chestnuts that he hoarded at home to entertain guests. Although I brought it directly after roasting it, it was really fragrant. Holding the warm chestnuts in his hands, the sweet fragrance filled his lips and teeth. L. Yu Huayan ate a few, and the following calculation was made, Uncle, I think these chestnuts are delicious. How much do you have? I want to buy some to take home. Hey, you can just take it back if you like it, why don't you buy it or not? The uncle repeatedly refused, but he still couldn't beat L. Yu Huayan, and finally settled the deal for a dime. Unexpectedly, this thing could still be sold for money, my uncle was very happy, he stuffed all the chestnuts he had hoarded into a rice bag and gave it to L. Yu Huayan, bulging a big bag. After chatting, my uncle specially invited them to come over for dinner. L. Yu Huayan didn't know this uncle very well. After the Shen family moved to the foot of the mountain, there was less contact. But my uncle probably received the money, and he felt really sorry for it, so he sincerely invited him. After all, on the top of their mountain, the chestnuts just took some effort, some people eat them, but no one really pays to buy them. The kindness was difficult to accept, but L. Yu Huayan agreed in the end. As the evening passed, I found that there were actually two strangers. They didn't look very big, there was a man and a woman, the man was wearing glasses, and he was gentle. Seeing him stunned, his uncle hurriedly introduced with a smile, Oh, just because my child's teacher came to visit, I'll leave the meal. Teacher? Is your surname Lee? Not impressed. But they were all scholars. L. Yu Huayan thought of college students, and with a smile on his face, he stretched out his hand, So it's Mr. Lee, hello. Hello, hello. Mr. Lee was surprised, and quickly reached out and shook hands with him. Uncle looked at them with a smile, speaking of which, Ruyun also knows him, right? Shen Ruyun? Seeing him puzzled, Teacher Li adjusted her glasses and smiled shyly, when student Shen was studying, I was her enlightenment teacher. The female teacher looked behind him, Hi? Where's classmate Shen? Father-in-law hurried over to call someone. Come, come, sit first, sit first, 
the closer you are, the better. Just shout and come. A group of people sat down and started chatting. The young teachers were Lu Huayan's opponents, but with just a few words, they were taken to the ground. Shen Ruyun did read books, but it was only in the literacy class. After the third grade, she needed 80 cents of tuition every semester. Her family couldn't afford it, so she dropped out of school. Actually, it's really a pity. Teacher Li shook her head and sighed, she is very hard working. What impressed me deeply about her is that she carries her younger brother to school every day. Yes. The female teacher felt the same, the most rare thing is that her grades will always be the first. These things are really long ago. L. Yu Huayan thought that his youngest daughter was still a real college student. The third grade of elementary school was nothing to him. He didn't pick it up either. For the sake of those chestnuts, he was chatting with him. Anyway, he was idle. Just when Shen Ruyun came over, he saw sharply that she had changed her clothes. Mr. Li, Teacher Chen. Shen Ruyun grabbed the corner of her clothes, glanced at them quickly, lowered her head again, and said like a fly, Hello, how are you? Seeing her being pulled by the teacher to sit down and chatting in a low voice, L. Yu Huayan narrowed his eyes. She also washed her face and tied her hair. No wonder it took so long. Probably because he watched it for a long time, his uncle got up quickly to help serve the dishes. These years, they have a lot of respect for the teacher, and they also prepared some rice wine. Although he didn't dare to persuade him, Mr. Li still drank half a cup. Just like half a cup, he was a little over the top. Well, in fact, I came here this time to hope that classmate Shen can continue to study. He half opened his eyes and his cheeks were flushed, you are very smart and very motivated. It's really a pity to give up your studies. Now the school is extremely short of teachers. If you can finish elementary school, you can take, exams, maybe teach your first grade classmates, A and D. Mr. Li Father Shen was so anxious that he didn't care about respect, he raised his voice and said, Ru Yun is already married. L. Yu Huayan turned the wine glass and slowly matched Teacher Li with a certain picture in his memory. He remembered. This Teacher Li, his full name should be Li Pilan. Maybe she really cherishes talent. She once ran in front of him and said some sour texts. The main idea was to persuade Shen Ru Yun to go back to study. At that time, he was young and ignorant, and his family was very poor, how could he have spare money for Shen Ruyun to study? He was told that, but he didn't want to admit that he had no money, so he took a bite back and asked if he liked Shen Ruyun, so he was rushing up. At that time, Li Pilan was angry and annoyed, she turned her face and left, and Shen Ruyun completely lost her heart to study, and she never mentioned it again when she was pregnant and had a child. But looking at Li Pilan at this time, L. Yu Huayan suddenly felt a little emotional. Sometimes, I have to admit that it is because of such people that the country will become so good in the future. He put down the wine glass and nodded cautiously, Mr. Li is right, the grades are so good, it's really a pity not to study. Before Mr. Li was happy, Father Shen put down the glass heavily, I'm done eating, let's go, let's go back. The atmosphere was stiff. Naturally, L. Yu Huayan couldn't lose face of her father-in-law, so the family could only get up and say goodbye. When he got home, Father Shen arranged for L. Yu Huayan to wash his face, wash his feet and sleep. After drinking, L. Yu Huayan was also sleepy. After a sleep, she found that Shen Ruyun had not come back. He got up and went to the toilet, feeling a little flustered. When it gets dark, people are really cautious in the mountains. Yu Yu reading www.yuyuganshu.com The wind whistled, unknown insects chirped, the thatched hut was still built outside, and the most important thing was that there was no light inside the hut. These days, lamps are extravagant. It's good to have one in the house. After all, the electricity is on, but the toilet is no problem. Just plug a torch into the wall to save money and trouble. 
Al Yuhuayan walked straight to the kitchen and went to get a torch first. As a result, as soon as he approached, he heard Shen Ruyun talking. I know. He said he would be nice to me, I, I can't study any more. It's going well. His parents are also doing well. Al Yuhuayan didn't listen to what he said later. He went to the toilet in the dark, and even forgot his fear. Lying back on the bed, he recalled for the first time. When the child was in school, he never interfered in the study, and Shen Ruyun supervised the homework in each subject. Sometimes she didn't know, and would secretly look up the dictionary. He even laughed at her. Thinking about it now, how did she, who dropped out of school in the third grade, do the questions in junior high school? He didn't think of the answer to this question. The next day, the two of them went out side by side, as if nothing had happened. The father-in-law still smiled and escorted them to the intersection, and told them to live a good life. It's just that the light in Shen Ruyun's eyes went out at some point in the past. El Yuhuayan didn't say anything. When he climbed to the top of the mountain to rest, he grabbed Shen Ruyun. I know. Our family's conditions are not good right now. The mountain wind was blowing, and the rising sun illuminated his face. He promised her very sincerely and earnestly, I will earn money. When we have a better life, I will sign you up for a night school when we have the chance. You can get a diploma and you can be a teacher if you want. Such a statement is unheard of. Shen Ruyun was stunned. Touching her head, El Yuhuayan smiled bitterly. Of course, it's not done right now, don't tell anyone about this, I'll think about it slowly. The current Shen Ruyun didn't say anything, and when she arrived at the door of the house, she suddenly hummed. El Yuhuayan didn't look back, but there was a smile on the corner of his lips. As a result, there was an angry scolding hidden, and no one who saw him could hear the hatred in it. A plague victim, your mother-in-law slaughtered chickens and oxen for you? It's a pleasure to go there. El Yuhuayan looked up and saw his mother standing on the beam of their house throwing firewood down. He hurriedly put the things in the house and went over to help. Mom, be careful, I'll come. No need. Zhao Suolin glared at him, obviously very angry. You should hurry up and find Zhou Zishu. Everyone has come to the house. Ba. Witied Wolf. Zhou Party Secretary. El Yuhuayan's heart skipped a beat, but he wasn't angry. With such a temperament, it's really boring to be angry with her. After carrying some firewood, El Yuhuayan asked the matter without much effort. It turned out that a college student was here, and Secretary Joe asked him to talk to him. El Yuhuayan washed his face and hurried to Joe's house. As a result, people left early, and Joe's issue was not at home. Aunt Jo looked at him with a smile and wiped her hands to make tea, I heard that you brought your daughter-in-law home? Oh, I went to see her that day. Your daughter-in-law is really beautiful. El Yuhuayan drank a cup of tea, and Jo Zisha finally came back. As soon as he saw him, Jo Zisha was very happy, it's a coincidence, they are ready, they will set off tomorrow, you go back and pack up, ah, but you still have to pay for the ticket get there. By the way, Lechen is going to school, how about you? Do you want to do anything? Think about it. El Yuhuayan put down the teacup and smiled, I'm going to go to the construction site first. I'll work with him for ten days and a half months. I'll make some money and come back for the new year. I'll look for a long-term job next year. The construction site. This job is good, down to earth. As long as you sell your strength, it is much better than bragging about running a train full of mouths. Josisha's face softened a lot, patted him on the shoulder and praised, Yes, young people must not be afraid of suffering. Especially El Yuhuayan said that after paying the self-paying fare, the last problem was solved, and he immediately said that he would come and call him tomorrow morning. El Yuhuayan went back excitedly, his mother was sick again. It was Shen Ruyun who was cooking, and his father was making baskets in the house. After packing up some clothes, El Yuhuayan went to the kitchen to help. One night, 
it was the nose, not the nose, and the eyes were not the eyes. When his father asked, L. U. Huayan said half of it and kept half of it. Secretary Joe actually wants me to send some college students. You know, he really loves his nephew. L. U. Huayan emphasized the importance of party Secretary Joe for college students, but understated his own travel, they seem to need a small job for two days on the construction site. Just two days? Why not? L. U. Huayan spread his hands and looked at his father helplessly, you know, these days, it's hard to find a job, and it's not that easy to make money. L. U. Baokuo smiled, and brushed the bamboo sticks with a bamboo knife, no, it doesn't matter if you can't make money, I'll teach you how to make baskets when I come back. Zhao Suolin, who had been listening to the corner from behind, returned to the room with satisfaction. It's best not to earn a dime. Even if she earns a few cents, it doesn't matter. She doesn't know her son yet. A master with five cents of flowers. When passing by the kitchen, she sneered a few words by the way. Shen Ruyun hurriedly washed the dishes, and when she hurried back, L. Yu Huayan had just finished taking a shower. I brought you some water, go and wash it, it will be cold later. L. Yu Huayan wiped his hair and prepared his luggage. Oh. Shen Ruyun prepared her clothes and glanced at him hesitantly, You, are you leaving tomorrow? L. Yu Huayan smiled and nodded, and gave her a brief overview. In order to avoid wearing gangs, he didn't say anything carefully on her side, but only said that he would go home a year ago. Shen Ruyun breathed a sigh of relief, picked up her clothes and walked to the door, then stopped and turned her head, then, do you have a place to live over there? Not now. L. Yu Huayan was not worried, but smiled, but I don't live long, I'll be back in a while, and it's fine to live on the construction site. Then what about your bag of chestnuts? This thing has grown worms for a long time, and it was bought with money, she couldn't bear to eat it. L. Yu Huayan smiled and patted the bag, I won't hide it from you, I'm going to sell it. Sell. Shen Ruyun was full of doubts and couldn't believe it, this, who would buy it? Can this thing be sold? After peeling for a long time, I still can't fill my mouth, not to mention whether I can fill my stomach, and I have diarrhea after eating too much raw food. It's okay, I have my own opinion. Seeing her worrying about her departure, L. Yu Huayan restrained her smile and sighed. In fact, if she doesn't say it, he also knows her difficulties. It's just his mother's temperament. He hasn't changed her for decades, and now he won't waste his efforts. When she came back, he stuffed her with two cents, I don't have much money now. If you are having a hard time at home, just buy something and hold on for a while. It will be fine when I come back. I don't want it. Shen Ruyun was very excited and pushed him, you want to go out to work, put more money on your body, I can't spend much money at home. Saying that, she opened the mattress and stuffed him with the money she had hidden, it's you, no one will take care of you outside, you must be careful, bring more money, and don't go hungry. It's all about split votes, and I don't know how long it took. Seeing that he didn't speak, Shen Ruyun became anxious, this is given by my mother, I didn't give it to you first. I know. Seeing her troubled appearance, L. Yu Huayan wanted to laugh a little, but felt more sad. How could he keep this money? It's hot. The next day, he packed his bag and went out early in the morning. It was still dark after breakfast. His father got up, but his mother was still lying angry. After explaining a few words, L. Yu Baokuo went back to sleep. Shen Ruyun followed him halfway and after a few words of persuasion from L. Yu Huayan, she agreed to go back. My mother's temperament, don't pay attention to her, if she says anything you want to go back to, if you don't want to, don't say it. L. Yu Huayan looked at the corners of her red eyes and was helpless, I know it's hard for you, wait for me to come back. It doesn't make sense for him to make promises about next year, and he doesn't say anything later. I know. Shen Ruyun held back her tears and raised her hand towards him with a smile, 
I won't quarrel with Mom, don't worry. Liu Huayan was a little reluctant, but she still gritted her teeth and left. Carrying a bag of chestnuts, I really can't get up quickly. By the time they got to the ground, Zhou Zishu and Zhou Lechen had been there for a while. What did you bring? The one who brought them into the city was a strong man, carrying a large bag, and Yu Yu Kanshu www.yuyuganshu.com also mentioned two things in his hand, let's talk about it first, but I can't carry it. If you move, you can take it with you, you have to carry it yourself on the road. Zhou Zishu glared at him and introduced him. This is my brother, you can just call him Uncle Qian. Uncle Qian. Liu Huayan smiled deliberately and honestly, and said cautiously, Haha, I'm afraid that I won't have a place to sleep in the past, so I brought a quilt and some clothes. If it's not heavy, I can handle it. Anyway, he put all his clothes on the outside of the chestnut, so he was afraid of breaking it, and even if he looked outside, he couldn't tell what was inside. Next to him, Zhou Lechen stood obediently with curiosity in his eyes. He was quite light, and he was done with a bag on his back. It was estimated that he put everything in Uncle Qian's bag. Zhou Zishu was very reluctant to give up, and then repeatedly instructed Zhou Lechen, You must listen to Uncle Qian, give the letter of introduction to the principal when you arrive at the school, and come back after a while after the holiday. Okay, brother Zhou, don't worry. I'll do some work, we'll go first, we have to catch the car. Uncle Qian seemed to be used to walking, so he didn't pay much attention to it. It cost 30 cents for two transfers. Liu Huayan stuffed the bag under the seat of the car, his eyes swept over Zhou Lechen from time to time. The journey was smooth, and there were no mistakes. Even when changing trains halfway through, Uncle Qian looked after him closely, wishing to hold his hand the whole way. Last time, how did he lose it? Uncle Qian, if he still had contacts with Zhou Zishu, he would definitely have an impression, but he really has no memory at all. Liu Huayan thought about it and couldn't help sighing in his heart. Judging by how much Zhou Zishu values Zhou Lechen, I'm afraid that the two brothers who are so good now will turn against each other after that. Probably can't stand it. As soon as I got out of the car, something really happened. Liu Huayan was tense all the way, and he was very cautious when he got off the bus. In fact, he doesn't have much stuff, and many people behind him have big bags and small bags, wishing they could carry all their belongings. So when they got off the bus, they were the ones who got off the bus first. Originally, Joe Lechen was supposed to be the first, but Liu Huayan stopped him. I'll be first. Uncle Qian's expression softened, he glanced at him admiringly, and held Zhou Lechen, yes, let your brother Liu get out of the car first. Liu Huayan got out of the car carrying the bag, stood still, put the things to his feet, and turned to look at Zhou Lechen. Walk. Uncle Qian was carrying something, and Liu Huayan hurried to pick it up. I'm fine. Uncle Qian gave in and pushed Zhou Lechen. Go ahead, there are many people here. There are indeed many people at the station, mainly a mix of fish and dragons, and there are all kinds of people. The cars are also parked chaotically, and it is common for people to be crowded. The two looked after each other, wrapped Joe Lechen in the middle, and walked out carefully. There are too many people, and people bump into them every now and then. Children were crying, adults were shouting and there were shouts in the distance. Liu Huayan had a headache from the quarrel, but he still tried his best to clear the way and walked outside the station. Halfway through the road, suddenly, my hand was empty. There's a thief. Joe Anken stopped and turned to look at the back, he stole my bag. He was obviously a weak scholar, but he didn't know where the energy came from, but he got rid of Uncle Qian, ran against the crowd and ran wildly forward. Ah, is there a thief? Where is it, oh my stuff? Liu Huayan couldn't take care of his chestnut anymore, so he chased after him desperately. There were too many people. Uncle Qian didn't keep up. He didn't know. Fortunately, 
he was always vigilant and reacted fairly quickly, so he could barely see the back of Zhou Anken's head. But the feeling of going against the crowd like this is really bad. A few times he was pushed by someone's elbow, and he couldn't scream in pain. Give way. He numbly drilled through various cracks. After finally chasing him out, he saw from a distance that Zhou Anken had already crossed the street. There are not many cars these days, so El Yuhuayan rushed over and caught him at the front of the alley. Who? Zhou Anken was sweating all over his face, and was pulled to a staggering state while panting. Turning his head to see El Yuhuayan, his anxious face showed a hint of joy, pointing to the alley and shouting, he just went in. I saw him dragging my bag. The alley is very long, with houses on both sides, and the light is very dim. El Yuhuayan hesitated for a second, then pushed him to the side, wait first, I'll go in and have a look. He wasn't brave, but he was afraid that this stunned blue-haired man would break in. Fortunately, although Zhou Anken was in a hurry, he was not stupid and nodded honestly and stood aside. El Yuhuayan looked around and touched a stone. He tiptoed and walked inside carefully. It was noon now, when the sun was at its highest, but the two houses were too close together, and no light could penetrate the alley at all. Using the dim light, he stood at the corner and looked in. A figure stood against the wall, with Zhou Anken's bag at his feet, and a faint light in his hand. He seemed to be in a hurry and was knocking on the door, Old Gao, Lao Gao, open the door quickly, take this guy. El Yuhuayan only hesitated for a second, then turned around and left when he heard the door open. Seeing him come out, Zhou Anken greeted him with a smile and looked around at him, Brother El Yu. Walk. El Yuhuayan dragged him and ran without a single pause. If he guessed correctly, Zhou Anken should have plunged into the alley so stupidly back then. Over the years, there are no bones left. No. Zhou Anken wanted to run back, my bag. Follow me. El Yuhuayan couldn't hold it back, and from his heart, he slapped him hard and shouted, What bag is more important than your life? Zhou Anken was stunned by the beating, covered his face and was dragged back by him. After crossing the road, I remembered to resist, I, my letter of introduction is in it. And my book. It's just a letter of introduction, just write another one. The person inside has a knife, you're going to die. The two were arguing, and Uncle Qian rushed over and followed someone behind him. Who told you to run away? Uncle Qian was furious. He cut Zhou Anken down first, then turned to look at El Yuhuayan, Huayan, what's the matter, tell me. El Yuhuayan glanced at the alley and spoke briefly and horribly. Hearing that the person inside was carrying a knife, Zhou Anken was going to run inside, Uncle Qian jumped, angry and anxious, and slapped him twice, don't worry, if something happens to you, what will I do? Tell your family. The more people there were, the more courageous they became. Several of them each took some and walked into the alley together. El Yuhuayan carried a wooden stick and followed Uncle Qian. Behind him, Zhou Anken, who was muttering, was still muttering that it was a pity he didn't catch anyone. The alley was not too deep. After walking for a while, I saw a closed wall. The two houses were staggered. A door opened on the left leading to the alley on the other side. After seeing the door, El Yuhuayan clenched his stick tightly and nodded to Uncle Qian. Uncle Qian understood, and threw a stone down. The lock opened in response, and Jing Dong fell to the ground. El Yuhuayan took a stick and stabbed it from a distance, and the wooden door creaked open. On the other side is another alley leading to another street. People come and go but the alley separated by a wall is very quiet. Ah! But it was Joe Lechen who stuck his head out and staggered back when he was frightened by something by the wall. El Yuhuayan followed and was stunned, this is. After confirming that there was no one else around, Uncle Qian decisively opened the torn newspaper that was hastily covered above. A shiny kitchen knife. Joe Lechen remembered that he had to chase into the alley before if El Yuhuayan hadn't come in time. This time, 
his face turned pale with fright. You know you're afraid. Uncle Qian glared at him angrily and picked up the kitchen knife, Okay, people have already left, don't think about your letter of introduction, I'll go back tomorrow and bring it home for you. That's it, don't go anywhere, just stay at school, understand? Okay, okay. Zhou Lechen had never seen this battle before, he thought it was just a thief, but he didn't expect them to bring a knife. L. Yu Huayan looked at the kitchen knife with a heavy heart. If he didn't come, if... Looking at Zhou Lechen, he was only a little scared. He didn't know that Zhou Lechen, who had been locked in the gate of hell, sighed in his heart. Yu Yu reading www.yuyuganshu.com Well, it can be regarded as repaying Uncle Zhou's kindness for helping him. Uncle Qian put away the kitchen knife, determined not to stay here any longer, let's go, go back. Fortunately, Uncle Qian was able to handle things steadily, and the ticket inspector looked at everything, and the person beside him was also a station staff member. Knowing that they lost something, a large crowd gathered at the station. Uncle Qian used to talk to them, but L. Yu Huayan didn't. Zhou Lechen came over from Uncle Qian and shoved it into his hand, here, eat the buns. These two buns are even lunch. L. Yu Huayan took it and took a few bites. He didn't care about the taste, his heart was full of bags. When he finally got his bag back, he reached out and touched it for the first time. At that time, the situation was urgent, and he didn't care too much, so he just threw it away and ran away. He didn't know how badly his chestnuts were, so he was a little distressed. This is what he wants to sell. It is his first pot of gold. Because of the trouble just now, Uncle Qian didn't worry that they left alone, so he went to school together. Without the letter of introduction, I could not attend classes for the time being, but Uncle Qian was very capable, so the dormitory was arranged, and L. Yu Huayan was also stuffed into it. L. Yu Huayan was at ease, but he did, saving accommodation costs. It just so happened that he had to save some money. After putting him down, Uncle Qian took Zhou Lechen to see the teacher. There were also many students in and out of the dormitory building. L. Yu Huayan watched it for a while. There are a lot of people, and they are all well dressed. At this time, students are still rich. He made up his mind and went back to the house to open the bag. As soon as he stretched out his hand, he touched the scum in his hand. His heart was instantly shaky. However, this is inevitable. At that time, the army was in chaos, and he just threw it on the ground. L. Yu Huayan sighed. He carefully pulled out the outermost layer of clothes, but unexpectedly found that the clothes were separated by layers of cloth. Fortunately, it was this layer of cloth, otherwise, if the chestnut was torn, his clothes would definitely suffer. Originally thought of breaking it up a little bit, it wouldn't be a lot. Man, don't worry about that. But now it's broken a lot, and it's quite troublesome to actually get it on the clothes. L. Yu Huayan poured out all the chestnuts, and then took out his clothes. This cloth's eyes were very familiar, and L. Yu Huayan was stunned, Hey? This is not. Isn't this the dowry that my mother-in-law gave to Shen Ruyun? Holding the cloth, L. Yu Huayan had mixed feelings. Shen Ruyun. I don't know if she noticed that the twenty cents were under the bed. She is alone at home, alas, I hope she will not be stupid and be bullied again. L. Yu Huayan put the cloth aside and cleaned out all the crushed chestnuts. Fortunately, it was much less than he imagined. And there are very few that are completely broken into slag, most of them are still intact, but they are crushed. It's a pity to throw away the cleaned ones but it's not easy to peel the raw ones. L. Yu Huayan touched it, very reluctant. To be honest, he was reluctant to eat. The family was too poor, and he wanted to make more money, so he picked up Shen Ruyun early to save her from suffering and anger. He collected the good chestnuts, and put the bad ones in a separate bag. After waiting for a while, Zhou Lechen really asked him to go to dinner. Uncle Qian was so overwhelmed with thoughts, 
he couldn't get up when he was eating. Zhou Lechen was very happy, saying that the principal promised to let him come to the class, but he just had to write a new letter of introduction. That's good. L. Yu Huayan was also happy for him, I think this school is good. Really? Zhou Lechen smiled foolishly, with happiness written all over his face, the key is that the teachers are good. The math teacher is something I admire very much. He spoke very vigorously, and while L. Yu Huayan listened, he looked around. The cafeteria is not big, but there are few dishes. The students buy meals with tickets, and everyone is about the same. Looking at the dishes, they are quite ordinary, most of which are boiled. L. Yu Huayan tasted it, but put less oil. Looking at those students again, most of them were bright and energetic, and he had a plan in his mind. Yes, these days, most people can at most be literate, and the family valued it, even if they die, they will finish school. I really want to send this junior high school to study hard. Most of them are like Joe Lechen. They have a little foundation at home and can afford it. It's a pity that it's still strictly controlled. If you sell things without approval, I'm afraid it will be called speculation. His chestnuts can't wait, he has to think of a way. Brother L.U., do you think my idea is good? L.U. Hawaiian temporarily pulled back his thoughts and nodded approvingly, I think it's the best. Yeah, right, ha ha ha, I'll just say it. Joe Lechen was satisfied. When he got back to the dormitory, he was really exhausted after tossing for a day. After washing, he fell asleep on the bed. Not long after L. Yu Huayan came back from washing, someone knocked on the door. It's all the time. He got up suspiciously and opened the door, Uncle Qian. Well. Uncle Qian glanced inside, Lechen sleeps. Sleep. L. Yu Huayan stepped aside and invited him in. Uncle Qian waved his hand. I'm not going in, I'll come over and have a word with you. This is rather strange. He didn't look for Joe Lechen, but he came to look for him. To tell you the truth, I was also taken aback today. Uncle Qian twitched the corners of his mouth, but he still couldn't laugh. During the day, the army was in chaos, and he didn't take it too seriously. When he looked back, he broke out in a cold sweat. I have been in friendship with Lao Zhou for so many years. If it wasn't for this, he wouldn't dare to give Lechen to me. Uncle Qian's hands were shaking a little, he took out a cigarette and took a sip before calming down, overall, thank you for today. Ah, actually I didn't do anything. He raised his hand and shook his head, don't be polite, I've written down your feelings. You came to the county to find work, right? Have you got it? L. U. Hawaiian shook his head and nodded again, I have an idea in my heart, but I'll be there for a while, I'm afraid I won't be able to do it. Uncle Qian raised his eyebrows and raised his chin towards him, tell me. Zhou Lechen started snoring on the bed, the two looked at each other and laughed. He simply went out and talked in the corridor for a while. Selling chestnuts? This thing can... Uncle Qian stopped halfway through. Glancing at L. Yu Huayan, he coughed, Ah, this is quite an idea. L. Yu Huai Fang didn't hear what he was doing, so he followed up with a smile, I thought it would be a pity to leave it alone. Maybe someone likes it. Let's try it, I don't have many anyway. That's true. Uncle Qian nodded and took a puff of cigarette, Sure, I'll go say hello to you, but it won't last long. How many days do you think this work will last? Bowing his head and thinking for a while, L. U. Hawaiian gave a positive answer, three days. It's only been three days. Uncle Qian breathed a sigh of relief, it's all right, this kid is quite sincere, and he doesn't have a big mouth. Seeing that the atmosphere was good, L. U. Hawaii Dangji unfollowed the stick, hey, Uncle Qian, this is the chestnut. I have my own way of selling it, but... What? Uncle Qian wanted to laugh a little, can you still carve flowers? That's not true. L. Yu Hawaiian touched his head, holding back a silly smile, that's right, 
mine is still raw, so I need to get a stove. Well, this kid can really give him life. After pinching the cigarette, Uncle Chien patted El Yu Huayan on the shoulder, Okay, I'll handle this for you, but I'll go back, Lechen, you have to take care of me. El Yu Huayan nodded quickly, then I would like to thank Uncle Chien, I dare not mention it, it's us who help each other. After getting his words, Uncle Chien returned with satisfaction. He moved quickly and neatly, and someone knocked on the door early the next morning. El Yu Huayan got up and took a look but it was still dark. Is it El Yu Huayan? The middle-aged man stood at the door and looked at him cautiously. Yes. Seeing him nodding, the man heaved a sigh of relief, that's right, Brother Qian said you wanted a fire roaster, and I'll bring it to you. Grilled? El Yu Huayan wanted to laugh a little when he heard it. He wouldn't make such a new long. He hurriedly put on a coat and followed him downstairs. Fortunately, although this brother's words were vague, he handled things neatly. The shovel, pot and stove are all available, and I don't know how Uncle Chien got it. Confirmed it for him, Yu Yu reading www.yuyuganchu. The calm man left in a hurry, saying that he was going back to the cafeteria to prepare breakfast. El Yu Hawaiian thought for a while, put the stove in the corner, and put the pot on it. After washing up, he took advantage of the dim light in the sky to put the pot with the crushed chestnuts on the cart. This cart is really full of manpower, a wooden cart, and the stove on it is still alive. El Yu Hawaiian put a lot of effort into pushing the car to the school gate. At this time, students in twos and threes began to enter the school gate. El Yu Hawaiian unhurriedly poured out half of the chestnuts in the pot, and put the rest directly on the stove. He dealt with these chestnuts yesterday, and a cross was cut on the flat surface of each chestnut. Some of them were fractured, so he didn't bother. The fire was also dry wood. He deliberately didn't put too much wood, so the fire was not big. In the crackling sound, the roasted chestnuts began to smell. About five minutes later, the students who passed by began to cast surprised glances one after another. Probably because they said hello, no one came to ask questions. But the students came and went, but none of them came up to ask or buy. El Yu Hawaiian thought for a while, and picked up a thin wooden board from under the trolley, which was usually used for storing things. Flip the chestnuts in the pot and continue frying. The right hand is holding the wooden board and slowly fanning. With this fan, the students who were originally walking very slowly were completely unable to walk. What is this? Chestnut. I've eaten it before, but it's just boiled, why is it so delicious? It's too fragrant. It must be expensive. Let's talk about it, let's look back and see, there is no one who pays for it. El Yu Huaixian pretended not to hear their arguments, but his movements were rather gentle. The fragrance is getting stronger and stronger. Sugar is extremely luxurious these days, not to mention such sweet chestnuts. Finally, someone couldn't help but came up and said, How did you sell this? El Yu Hawaii was relieved, smiled, and said, One dime per bag. Others are not familiar, but this bag is very familiar. The student took a look and felt relieved, The cafeteria now sells chestnuts? Why don't you sell chestnuts in the cafeteria? Come here and give me a dime. Okay. El Yu Hawaiian picked up the shovel and shoveled a large shovel neatly, I'm not from the cafeteria, I borrowed the place to sell it for two days. These days, white sugar is a rarity, and there are no snacks. The colorful candy is so sweet that the children are still very greedy. Not to mention such pure and wild chestnuts, roasted at high temperature. The fragrance is unbearable. It's just that no matter how fragrant it is, some people murmur, a dime. How about stealing money? That's right, it's too expensive, it's not worth it, let's go, let's go. Several people left immediately. No matter what others thought, the student couldn't help but want to reach out to grab it and eat it as soon as he got it. El Yu Hawaiian hurriedly stopped him, wait a minute, it's hot now. 
someone who didn't plan to buy it immediately hummed, maybe it's impossible to eat it. He squinted at the chestnut and raised his neck, my distant relatives gave some of this stuff. It's hairy, and the flesh is small and hard to peel. After a long time, they gnawed on it with the fur and the fur, tisk, root. When some students who were always particular and thought they were different from mud legs heard this, they immediately lost their minds. It turned out to be just the food of the country people. El Yuhuayan did not respond at all. Seeing that he was seriously stirring up the stir-fry, and he didn't say anything at all, the man really couldn't speak, and walked away. Ah, it's so hot. The student who bought chestnuts didn't care about this. He was really uncomfortable with the fragrance of the chestnuts, so he carefully pinched one despite the heat. Those who knew it immediately laughed, Chen Yongming, don't eat a mouthful of hair haha. Whether he is hairy or not, I want to try it anyway, I really can't stand the fragrance. Chen Yongming also smiled, holding the chestnut very beautifully. As a result, there is no need to shave at all, and there is no hair as they say. The chestnut that was roasted until the skin was blasted, the flesh inside was already glowing with a golden sheen, and when pinched and squeezed, the flesh protruded out on its own. Chen Yongming put it into his mouth without hesitation, so hot that his tongue slipped and he was reluctant to retract it. It is sweet and glutinous, and when you sip it with the tip of your tongue, the tender chestnuts will melt in your mouth. The fragrant fragrance overflowed between the lips and teeth instantly, leaving the crispy chestnut meat on the surface, and when the teeth were bitten, a crisp creaking sound could even be heard. It was the first time he had eaten such delicious chestnuts. His expression was so exaggerated that his eyes narrowed into slits. Hey, you are too fake. Haha, <laughs> Chen Yongming, is this your relative? Who are you fooling? It's like something delicious. Come, give me one. Chen Yongming couldn't open his mouth, and his body shrank back. Seeing them clamoring and making a fuss, L. Yu Huayan fanned the board and smiled. Yes, this business is stable. Sure enough, the group of people picked up a chestnut and ate it, and immediately turned around and came back to buy it. Although they don't have much money, a dime is really not much for students like them who don't need to go to the ground and study every day. What's more, this amount is enough. A dime is a big shovel. Give me a dime. I also. L. U. Hawaiian acted swiftly and packed the fried pieces one by one. This batch was fried before. I just shoveled it out. You see, it's not too hot. It's just right to eat now. He explained while pretending. Chen Yongming stepped forward and handed over the bag, I want to buy another bag. Ah, it's so delicious, I didn't eat a few just now. After all, he was the first customer, and L. Yu Huayan generously filled him a bag. It's a pity that it was the first day, and L. Yu Huayan wasn't sure how much he could sell, so he didn't bring too many, basically all chestnuts that were crushed. After a while, the chestnuts in the pot were sold out. L. Yu Huayan had no choice but to hold back, looking a little embarrassed, ah, sorry, it's all sold out. The chestnuts I have already bought are delicious, and the ones I haven't bought are in a hurry. Then what should I do? I haven't eaten yet. That's right, why don't you bring some more? How can you sell so much? Hey, it smells so good. L. U. Hawaiian didn't argue with them, just smiled and apologized. After they calmed down, they said leisurely, I'll come over tomorrow, but I don't have too many chestnuts. Is it still coming tomorrow? Chen Yongming's eyes lit up, and he immediately made a decision, that's fine, I'll come tomorrow. The other classmates had already lost their confidence, but they didn't expect the twists and turns, so they laughed too. Yes, I will buy it too, you must come. L. U. Hawaiian took out the firewood and smiled while turning off the fire, okay, I will definitely come. It was just before class, and the students didn't even bother to eat chestnuts, so they hurried to class. Chen Yongming ate a bag in front of him, but he didn't eat this bag after a few pills. 
After thinking about it, he the bag and prepared to take it back to his family to taste. This chestnut is so fragrant, his sister must love it. As soon as I entered, the classroom was filled with the fragrance of chestnuts. Some people live in the school. They don't know what's going on. They stick out their noses and smell hard. It smells so good. What is this? Chen Yongming has always been popular, and some classmates couldn't help but come over to ask. He is also very generous, and let him take it himself. That's so embarrassing. Usually they are reluctant to buy snacks. How can they have such a big face to grab it directly? Most of them just take one to taste, and Yu Yu reading www.yuyuganshu.com has a lot of aftertastes. L. Yu Huayan finished selling the chestnuts and packed up the cart. He was wondering where to put such a big guy. That old man came over in the morning. Hey, brother L. Yu. He glanced at the pot and said with a smile, I heard that there are chestnuts sold here, so I came here. It's all sold out, right? Then I'll push the stove back, will it be available tomorrow? I want it. Taking out a bag of chestnuts from the bottom, L. Yu Huayan smiled and put it in his arms, I specially reserved a bag for you. It's going to be shipped around. It's hard work, brother. Although he said how embarrassed he was, the bag man didn't plan to push it out. After one push and two, the two of them chatted side by side and walked back. Back in the dormitory, L. Yu Huayan realized that his feet were numb. Stand for a while. He didn't care about pinching his feet, he just sat down on the bed, opened the money bag, and fell down. Divided tickets, corner tickets, and some are food stamps. Not everyone brought money with them. Some people said they would pay with other tickets, but L. Yu Huayan agreed. No one refuses to come, he is lacking anyway. Well, these are food stamps. L. Yu Huayan picked them up in detail and carefully stacked them together. In the end, I made a total of 1 yuan and 60 cents, and some food stamps, oil stamps, cloth stamps, etc. After collecting all the money, L. Yu Huayan thought about it, stuffed all the tickets in his pocket, and wanted to go out for a walk. Chestnuts can still be sold for a day or two, not much. A total of 4 or 5 yuan can be sold, which is enough for this year. But this thing is hard to come by, it's too easy to be copied, and the school is now looking at Uncle Qian's face. After a few days, it's not easy for him to set up a stall here. Still have to think of other ways.